Hey, it's Jim Walninski with the Photo Tribe. I get lots of questions about how to create custom brushes in Photoshop. So I'm gonna demystify that for you. Well, why would we even wanna be able to do that? As photographers, we do lots of dodging and burning, and I think the best way to do that is with some kind of a pressure-sensitive tablet like a Wacom or an XP pen or something like that because I can change the opacity of my brush stroke simply by pressing harder on the tablet if I set my brush up the right way. In order to do that, however, you have to use the brush settings palette. And the brush settings palette can drive you crazy because it's got all these weird settings in it and it doesn't always work the way you think it should work and people give up. And I don't want you to do that, so I'm gonna demystify that for you. Before we start though, I wanna just go over a couple of really quick things just by way of review. You probably already know this, but just in case. If you want to select the brush tool, you hit the B key, B for brush. And believe me, if you learn your keyboard shortcuts, life's going to be a lot easier for you. You can also click on the little brush icon here, but I'm just going to encourage you again, learn your keyboard shortcuts. Photoshop paints with the foreground color. Now your foreground background colors are down here. If you've got different colors in here and you want to get back to black and white, you can just either click on this little icon over here with the two black and white squares, or you can hit the D key and you'll go back to the default colors. If you need to switch these colors, for example, blacks on the bottom and whites on the top, all you need to do is hit the X key and that's a toggle. It'll swap these back and forth. So keep that in mind. We're gonna want black because we're gonna create a document that has a white background. So let's just kind of push ahead here. I'm gonna go up into the file menu and I'm gonna create a new document. We'll just accept this preset here. It's got a white background. That's really all that matters. And I'm gonna hit create. And so we get this background. We're gonna use two different palettes to do this. And by the way, sometimes you'll hear me use the word palette. Sometimes I'll say panel. And you know, that's one of the things about Photoshop those who have been using it for a long time, the verbiage seems to have kind of changed sometimes. So sometimes I go back and forth, but if I say panel or palette, I mean the same thing. So we want to use the brushes palette and the brush settings palette, and they're both up here in the window menu. So I'm going to select the brushes palette, and mine opens up over here because that's where I have it docked. Yours might not. So let me just close this for a second or collapse it by hitting this double arrow here and pull it out and show you how to do that. I'm going to click on that to open it up. So if your brush panel opened up like this, I'm going to encourage you to dock it over to the side because then you can just click on it, open it up, and just leave it open while you're doing your work. You can go back and forth and select whatever brushes you need, and then you just close it again. So to dock it, I'm just going to collapse this by clicking the double arrow. And I'm going to click on this and drag it over to the right here and just wait till I get that little blue vertical line and then just drop it in there. So now when I want to open it, all I have to do is click on it. There it is. And when I want to close it, I'm done. Just click on it and it goes away. So let's open that again. The other palette that we want is the brush settings palette, which we can select here, but we can also select it just by clicking on this little folder here and it's gonna open up. Now, don't freak out by all this stuff that's in here. Remember, there's all kinds of people that use Photoshop. Video editors use it, graphic designers use it, web designers use it. There's all kinds of people that use it. So there's something in here for everyone. As photographers, we're not gonna use a whole lot of these settings, so most of this stuff you can ignore. The thing to remember is that the settings that are active in here reflect whatever brush has been selected. So in our case, we're gonna select a soft round brush, go back to the brush settings palette. The only thing that is selected is smoothing. And that's exactly what we want. If I choose something else like brush like this, and we go back here, we can see that we've got some other settings that are active. But we're gonna build our brushes off the soft round brush. So I'm gonna go back to my brush settings palette, and I'm gonna make a modification here. And I'm gonna click on transfer. So I'm going to check the checkbox. Now this is where some of us get hung up. We check the checkbox 
and we're looking for a setting over on the right side that isn't there. And it's because you have to click on the word sometimes to activate this strip that will bring up these controls. So I'm gonna actually click on the word transfer and there are my controls, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a brush that's going to change opacity based on how hard I press on the tablet with my pen. So opacity jitter is the setting that I want. Now I'm not gonna mess with this slider at all. What I really wanna do is make sure that my control drop-down menu, which is right here, and you can see that it's a drop-down menu if I click on it, yours might be off. What you wanna do is click on it and select pen pressure. So we're telling Photoshop, hey, opacity of this brush, respond to the pressure of the pen. And that's it, we've just built a brush. All we have to do now is save it. So I'm gonna click on the little pancake menu up here and select new brush preset. And we're gonna call this one opacity. Opacity only. I wanna leave these boxes the way they are. I don't want the top box checked because I don't wanna capture the brush size in this preset. I want my brush size to stay the size that it was before I selected this brush. I do want to include the tool settings, which includes anything that's up on this options bar. And I don't know if you can see this, but my opacity is set at 20%. Now, why do I do that? Because this is a dodge and burn brush. And dodging and burning is something that should be done gradually, and you should build it up a little bit at a time. And if I use 100% brush, I can't do that. So I select 20% as my starting point. I find that a comfortable place to work. You might want to set it a little differently, but try this out and see if that doesn't work for you. And we don't want the color because we're only working with black and white anyway. So I'm just going to click OK. And if I go back to my brushes palette, hey, there's my opacity only brush. Perfect. So I'm going to go back to my brush settings and we're going to make another brush. This time I'm going to uncheck transfer and I'm going to check shape dynamics. And once again, I have to click on the word shape dynamics in order to activate those controls. This time I wanna make a brush that gets bigger when I press harder on the tablet. And so the setting that I want is size jitter. And I want my control menu to be set on pen pressure. And that's it. So I just need to save this brush and I'm gonna click on new brush preset. And we're gonna call this one size only and I'm going to leave my checkboxes the same way they were before and click OK. I want to make one more brush and that's just kind of a default brush and I'm going to make a default brush because we're going to save this set of brushes together and to do that all I need to do is go back to the original brush I had and I just need to uncheck this box. All I've got is smoothing and I'm just going to save this brush by creating a new brush preset. And this one I'm gonna call no pressure. And I'm gonna hit okay. So if I go back to my brushes palette, here are the three brushes I just created. Now, if you've left Photoshop or you've gone to a plugin or something like that, and you come back, sometimes your brushes aren't there. And different versions of Photoshop treat these things differently. This is CC 2018. And um, Adobe did introduce a new brush panel in CC 2018, which is awesome because it has these little folders in it called groups. And I can drag stuff around and do whatever I want to, just like I would in the layers palette. What you need to do is you need to save your brushes. So I'm going to select my brushes. I've clicked on the bottom one and I'm going to shift click on the top one. There's the three brushes that I created. And all I need to do now is just export these brushes. And if I click this, you're gonna get a dialog box and you can see that I've been fooling around in here. And I'm just gonna call this, um, you know, Jim's Wacom and just save it. So if you come back into Photoshop or if somebody else is in your copy of Photoshop and they're fooling around and they've deleted your brushes by mistake, no need to panic because you've saved your brushes. And all you need to do is click on the pancake menu and go to import brushes and click on Jim's Wacom or whatever you named your brushes. And there they are. 
in their own little group. And I can then drag this group to the top. And then what I like to do is keep this open and I'll just resize this window. And now all I need to do is reach for a brush when I need it. By the way, if you're using a different tool and then you need a brush, you don't need to select the brush tool. All you need to do is tap on the brush. So if I have, say, the move tool selected and all of a sudden I need a brush, I don't have to hit the B key. I don't have to go up here and grab the brush tool. All I have to do is come over here and click on my opacity only brush or whatever brush I want and Photoshop activates the brush tool for me. So I want to test these brushes out. I'm going to change my opacity to 100% by clicking on the zero key. And you can see that that's reflected up in here. If I want a brush that has an opacity of 30%, all I need to do is hit the three key. If I want 50%, hit the five key or the six key for 60% and so on. I want 100% and that is zero. So 100% painting with black with a opacity, um, a uh, no pressure brush is actually the one I want, not the opacity only brush. And it's not gonna matter how hard I press and you'll see that it's saved. I'm glad I made that mistake because it saved the 20% opacity that I created the brush with. And so now I'm gonna undo that brush stroke and change to 100%. And now it doesn't matter how hard I press or how light I press, the stroke is the same. So let's undo that and I'm gonna go over here and select my size only brush. And you'll see that my opacity is 20% because that's what I saved it as. I wanna change it to 100 for this test. So I'm gonna hit the zero key. And the lighter I press, the smaller my brush stroke is until I press so hard that it actually reaches the size of the brush that I had selected, which in my case is 90 pixels. So if I select a larger brush to begin with, then my brush stroke is going to get larger. So let's undo those two and let's test our last brush, which is the opacity only brush and size has nothing to do with that. And you can see that it saved it at 20%, just exactly the way I wanted. And I'm going to press the zero key to go to hundred and very lightly pressing the harder I press and the more opaque my stroke becomes. That's exactly what I want. So what does this look like when you're working? Well, if I go back to this document over here, we'll just convert that to black and white. I got a quickie conversion in here and I'll just keep my opacity only brush selected. And I wanna do say some burning in this area down here. I might select a curve and just darken that and make sure my mask is selected. Control I to invert the mask. And now all I need to do, I'm gonna close this properties window. I can leave this open. And all I need to do is just select the size brush I want. I've got a 20% opacity um, brush, as you can see up here in the options bar. And now I can go ahead here, painting with white to poke a hole in this black mask. I can go ahead and start to dodge and burn to my heart's content. Now, I'm just gonna color out in this area here so you can see that, you know, that's exactly what's happening. Here's my mask view. If I hold down the Alt key, you can see what I've done in my mask. And if I turn this on and off, we've revealed that darkening adjustment in that little section there. So that's how you use the brush panel to create custom brushes. Don't be afraid to get a pressure sensitive tablet because you don't know how to use the brush panel. And don't be freaked out by all the settings in there because you're not going to use most of them anyway. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click on the subscribe button. This is Jim Walninski from the Photo Tribe. I'll see you next time. Until then, be creative and have fun.